Uh, let's get started. So, what we are going to make today is a Celtic knot pen. And this is a really cool uh, design that until a couple of years ago I had never even tried it. And I actually kind of didn't try it because I thought it would be super hard. And it's not super hard at all. Um, part of the reason is if you can see this, I'll try to get closer to the camera. Whoop, it's hard to do. So there's three layers of material in the knot, the silver, black, and silver. And what that is, is it's aluminum, uh, hard plastic, and aluminum sandwiched together. Now, ordinarily, you would have to make those three layers to, to have it be this way. And to me, this adds a lot of complexity to the look of it, but it's not any harder than doing one layer because we sell this material called, we call it just segmenting material. And it's just that, it's the sandwiched material. Let's see if we can show it here. It's aluminum, plastic and aluminum. And we use this and then it gives it three layers instead of one. This comes in a fairly big uh, six by 12 sheet for like five bucks. So as far as pens, you can do a ton of pens out of it. And I do a lot of stuff with it. Um, even this, which is just a straight segment, but it really adds a lot of cool look to the pen. So it doesn't have to be a Celtic knot. It could just be one angle. It could just be straight. It can be anything you want, but it just glues, turns, sands really nicely. And this material has been really cool. So ever since I discovered this, I've really liked it. So that's what we're going to make today. Now I want to show you because it doesn't have to just be pens. Um, and unfortunately I don't have a round version of this because I believe it's sold to someone. But this is a like a handle or a pepper mill block. And you can see this is what the Celtic knot looks like when it's all glued up. Now this looks pretty complicated if you don't know how it's made, but it's really, really simple. And I'll, I'll quickly explain it and then it'll probably be easier when I show you, but uh, it's four cuts is all, four cuts. So essentially you take your blank, you cut one angled cut and you replace that cut with the material. So that would go in there. And then you would rotate it and make the same cut, replace the material, rotate it, same cut, replace the material, and fourth time, replace the material. And that is it. So you're asking how are these top and bottom lines on there? What that is, is it's the bottom and the top of each angle. So if you imagine that material going all the way across there, that's what it is. So it looks really complex in the block, or I think it looks complex, to me it did, but it's fairly simple. Um, and making this, you can do it a variety of ways. The first few times I did it on the table saw, and that works fine. Um, lately I've been using the chop saw, and I'll show you what I'm doing but the trick with pen blanks is they're kind of small, so it's dangerous to make angle cuts on a small blank with your fingers so close to the blade. So I kind of made up this little hokey jig that helps do that. So we're gonna, we're gonna glue one up, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then we'll turn it. So there'll be some switching back and forth here um, to, from the saw to here when I'm gluing it up, and I'll kind of walk you through the process. So, quick, quick supplies needed list here. Whoa. <clears throat> You'll need whatever blank you want. And we're gonna be using a uh, dyed maple blank, which I'll show you, it's already in the jig. You'll need CA glue and accelerator. I use mercury medium for this. You can use any glue you like as long as it doesn't go off too fast. You'll need the segmenting material, which I've already cut up into little squares, and I only need four. And I have some sandpaper here, and then of course your pen tube for whatever pen you want to make, and you can go from there. Now, I'm going to knock this out. We are going to turn the blank, we'll do it between centers, but I want to put my sanding disc on here for now. And 
what this is, is this is just a mini chuck. This is a little SC1 uh, with one of our sanding discs. Oop. Let's see if you can see it here. We lost the camera here for a sec. There we go. I wonder why that turned off. Oh, it looks like it was on. Huh? It looks like it was on. Did it? Maybe it was and I bumped it, but this is just a sanding disc. Um, sometimes I'll use it to take off burrs after I've cut this stuff, but uh, mostly I'm going to use this to round the blank and the edges when I glue it. Now, a couple quick things before we start the blank. You want to cut your little segments here, and uh, you can cut them fairly small. These are like one inch by three quarter maybe. There will be, I cut these on the bandsaw, there will be some burrs. So I take a sanding sponge block and I just get each one and I knock all the burrs off. And that's important for, for I think two reasons. One is it scratches up your surface just a little bit. This is powder coated aluminum, so it's hard material, but it, you know, you don't want it slick. And it takes off the burrs, but then the burrs will cause your blank to not lie flat. So when you put the pieces together, you'll have a gap there, which will cause you trouble later. So let's jump over to the saw and I'll kind of explain what's going on there. And where we're at, okay. Let me grab my glasses. So what I've got here is, this is my miter saw and it's set up. So I just have it set up at a 45 degree angle and I've got this little, like I said, it's a little jig here. It's just a, some scraps. And I put this on, it's cut at a 45 here. I clamp it down for safety. So it won't move once I put it on here. And the key to my method here, which you can do this a million different ways, is I have a backstop for the blank and I have something holding the blank because I don't want my fingers right here with the blade coming down. This is a big 12 inch, um, saw and it could really do some damage if your fingers were too close or got pulled in. So I keep my hand back here, cut that, and then we glue it in. So what I'm going to do is show you how I do this. And you don't have to have a jig, but it sure doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do is label my blank with the four sides. And the reason this is important is you got to go in the order of cuts to make it look right. Now, I've never gone out of order, but I should try it to see what it looks like. It might look cool, or it might look like nothing. So, just to recap, because I was, whatever. Uh, label your blank, one, two, three, four, and then just go in that order to make the cut. So, I'm going to load this up, and I'm going to put the number one up, up. And I'm just putting my blank in here. I'm using this stop. I'm using my little stop here. Yeah, that camera's not getting power for whatever reason. We'll ignore it. So that, and then I'm just going to tighten my little holder down. And the real only thing that matters is that my blank is back here every time. And that I rotate the blank one, two, three, four. So I've got one up. Okay, so one is up. I'm going to make my cut. Glasses on. Make sure everything's out of the way. All right. So you can see now I've got the cut here. And I'm essentially going to do this process four times that you'll see. So I've got a nice clean cut on that material. And now I'm going to put in the segment. So I want to keep the, the lines the same. I want to make sure that everything is over the, the blank exactly how it is. You can see the lines in this are really cool. So I'm, all I'm going to do is replace that cut with some material. Now I used to try to match my saw blade width to the material so that way it was perfect. But what I learned is it doesn't really matter because um, 
as long as I'm stopping it on the back here every time, not the front, this length is always going to be the same when I rotate with that material. So it should work out just fine. This is how I've done the last several, so it's been good. Now I like to put a little CA on my blank. And I want to smear it around good. Because this is all that's holding your blank together. So, And then I spray my material. And I the reason I have this board here is I use it as a flat surface. So this one's not as important because I'm not lining any grain up. But I just hold it in there and I squeeze it. I use that flat surface to make sure this is flat right here. And then I just give it, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds. And I think, if any of you watch Zach Higgins, uh, he saw one of my videos, Zach and I talked a lot, but he liked my method of just holding it, basically using my hand as a clamp, and uh, technical support please, I dropped the part, thank you. Um, but because CA sets fast with accelerator, you just have to hold it for that few seconds. Now this is the one where I could really mess it up because I'm essentially lining it all up by, hand, by eyesight. And uh, there's some really big lines here, so it can make it look really bad. Now, same thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this block, it's flat on that side, and I'm gonna get it right to where I think it goes, and I'm gonna push. And I just wiggle it so it doesn't glue to the table. All right, now, I will say that's pretty darn close, so it doesn't look bad. So you can see my lines continue, and all I did was just cut that segment and stick it in there. Now, if I wasn't doing a live stream, I would take this over to the, the bandsaw or the big disc sander and cut these off because it's a lot faster. But uh, in an effort to not go anywhere, we can sand them off right here and you can see how quickly I mean that wasn't a huge piece but how quickly it just is gone the back is pretty much flat already that side is pretty flat and really all I'm concerned with is taking that material down so I don't really care about the blank I don't need to sand it I just need this to be flat on all sides so that when I clamp it up I don't have any Anything keeping my blank out from the from the cutter. All right, so we're gonna go back to the saw. So if you remember, that was number one. Now this is something I do often when I'm sanding them. I will sand the numbers off. So a lot of times I write them back each time because I don't want to forget that. The numbers not only keep me going in the right order, but they remind me to check the order. So there was my number one cut. Now I'm going to rotate. And you can see I'm across the top on this one. This is my number two cut. So I'm just going to load it back in here. Make sure it's stopped up against there. Get this to hold it down. And again, this is kind of overkill, clamping this down, but I don't want my fingers to be at risk. So I'm going to make the cut. And the sniper. And you can already see like some pretty cool things are happening. So there's my material inside from the first cut. And that's my second cut. I don't know what that line was. That I didn't draw that for this, so that must have been something else. So let's go back over here. Now there is a little burr on this corner from where my saw cut and it fell and broke. So I'm just gonna by hand flatten that out. Yeah, we're good. So it's kind of cool to see how these start to line up. So that's there. Nope, that's there. So that one cut across now is all the way on the bottom. And if we go over here, it's on the top. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I got a piece of material. I want to make sure it's all good. If any questions pop up, Amy, just let me know. I'll go ahead and do these all right now so we don't have to do them next time. 
And again, just get the burrs off, get it a little scratched up. You're not trying to get through the paint or anything. That doesn't really matter. Nice and clean. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna glue this one up. I'm gonna put my glue on here. Now this is key. I wanna make sure that I, I line this up correctly. I guess you really can't do it backwards because it only goes one way to make a long blank. Okay, so I got my glue on there. I'm gonna spray it with accelerator. First one doesn't matter because there's no grain with the segmenting material. I don't know if you can see it there, but that's squeezed out really nicely. So I know that I got some good pressure on it. Give it a few seconds here. Spray it. Lawrence wants to know if epoxy would work as well. Epoxy would work just fine. Um, I'm only doing this for the speed of it with the accelerator for the demo. Uh, epoxy is probably, in the long run, maybe a better choice um, for, for strength. Epoxy is really strong. Now, that being said, um, I've made a bunch of these like this, and I've only had one ever come apart out of many. So this works pretty well. I'm not saying it couldn't blow up. If it's going to blow up, it'll blow up today because... Whenever you're doing a demo, that's usually when it happens. But um, I would use epoxy if you've got the time, for sure. So if you look here, so we got our number one cut here. And then we rotated, and we got our number two cut. And now we're going to glue that in. Now, this side is sticking up. This side is flat, because that's what I had down. So I want to make sure and go that direction when I glue this. So I'm going to put my glue on he here. And be careful not to spray your pieces with the accelerator when you're gluing. That's why you'll see me hold it back here out of the way. I don't want to accidentally spray stuff that'll stick later. Oh, this one doesn't have any grain, so it's going to be hard to line up. Okay, there we go. And again, I just wiggle it so it doesn't glue itself to the, to the counter or the table, whatever. Okay. Eh, that one wasn't quite as good. Huh? That's how you know it's real. Huh? That's how you know there's no camera tricks because it's not perfect. Uh, but it's not bad, so it, it's fine. So I'm just going to take off this little tiny lip on each side. Again, I'm not real concerned about the blank. I'm not sanding the blank, I'm just sanding down that material. If my pieces were cut just perfect, I guess, I wouldn't have to do that. You can see, maybe, I'll turn this off. There's a slight gap from my gluing. It's pretty minimal, but, you know. All right, so we've got one, the diagonal. Rotate, two, there you can see the lip. And now we're going to do three, same way. So then we're going to have an X on side three when we're done here. Back to the saw. My three is still good, so I'm going to put that up. Load it in. People really like your jig to protect your digits. Yeah, this jig was just made out of a bunch of scraps, so I didn't have to get my fingers near it. Because I think using the... the, the well, I'm not like, this saw is easier than the table saw, um, but it's a lot riskier at an angle to have your fingers so close. So, all right, now my three is up. I always make sure three is up. I can make the cut. And if you always did the same size blank, you could actually make this really cool uh, of a jig to where it just always fit. So there's my next cut, right there. But you can see everything's starting to come together. That's how they look inside, where they're crossed over. All right. So this one we're gonna do the same way. I'm gonna pick the flattest side here because I do have a little wonkiness, realness in there. All right, we're gonna do this one first. Put a little glue. Now you do want to make sure if you're going right from that to this and this is warm, make sure it's not warm and you put the glue on because the warm will set your glue off faster and you do not want that. 
Lawrence has a question. He says, if you use a lathe to drill small parts, if it's centered, will your hole still be off at the end, on one end? Ah, I glued my finger. Can you turn that off? It's behind the Laguna. It's a red lever, a little red lever. Those are the things I forget because I haven't done live streams for a while, so I forgot to turn off the compressor. So tell me that question again because I don't think I understood it. I'm just getting the extra glue off from my finger, if anyone's wondering. Um, if you use a lathe to drill small parts, if it is centered, will your hole still be off on one end? Only maybe if you have a bent spindle like me, otherwise not, but deeper holes you'll still need to make sure you feed it straight. Well, that was the question and then the answer. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. If you drill on the lathe, uh, it'll be centered unless your bit or something is messed up. So, yeah. Now this one, I want to make sure my my line is good here. You can see that if I you know if I glue it down, that'll really throw off the look. Now I will tell you, whoops, I will tell you, one of these I did, and I don't know what it something moved and it totally had one angle way different than the others, and it still looked cool. And what it did was on one side it was all tight, the weaving, and the other side it was all spaced. So it, I would still turn it if I messed it up because it probably will still look cool. All right, so we are good. Let me put this just a little. There we go. All right. So, going on that side, because it's the flat side. And hopefully we'll look good here. Oh, almost did it wrong. Glue on this one. For some reason I like the glue on the wood side, because I think it soaks in a little bit maybe. This is stabilized wood, so I don't know if it does anything. But, it's what I do. Okay, that was the side, right? All right, here we go. Uh, now, by the end of this, my blank is kind of funny looking because I've, I've cut, I've drilled, not drilled, I've cut and I've glued, but the thing still lines up even as bad as I've done a couple of these. You can see the grain line still going through. The grain line still, well, that was a squiggly line, so that helps. Uh, but there goes through. So we've got now, let's take a look. Our first cut, our second cut. Oh, let me go over this. Our first cut here, across. Our second cut, across. Our third cut, across. And our fourth cut will complete the X with the lines. So you see we're just missing the fourth cut. So let me square this up. The aluminum uh, sands really easy, turns really easy, cuts really easy, so you don't have to do anything special. All right, back to the saw. So take note, three was our last one. Now we're gonna do four right there. Making sure it bottoms out. Tighten it down. starts to look cool because you've got all that stuff going on inside and that fourth piece will be the finale for making that look right okay so last thing so you can see this is just a process um, 
once you have what works for you, how you hold it, you just repeat the steps. And the, the trick is that I learned right away is cleaning it up each time um, so that it's square to where when I cut it, it's in the saw properly. If I had a lip and it moved it out a little bit, I'm exaggerating, but if it moved it out, your cut would just be a little wonky. So if somebody's super precise, they probably hate this demonstration, but for wood turning, it's good. A knife maker would hate this demonstration because those guys are real precise. All right, let's glue it up. Again, I bring it back to spray it because I don't want to spray the other piece or the glue. And that's my flat side. Just glue it right in there, hold it. And you can see not a lot of glue squeezes out, but if, if there was enough to, to glue it to the table, you wouldn't want to do that. So, so that is why I do that. Now, this is where I could really mess it up, although it's nice and flat. So it's, it's flush and flat, so I should be just fine here. So let's do her. I'm gonna put the glue all over. Spray this down. And ooh, together. I'm just gonna hold that for a minute. And I'm squeezing pretty hard. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I am really trying to get it squeezed in there and squeeze out that glue. But with Accelerate, I think 10 seconds is probably more than enough. Now, if I was concerned about any of these seams, I could definitely take some thin, if my bottle worked. How come the, the glue never wants to work on camera? Oh. It's because somebody left the cap off yesterday. I was about to say, could it be that you never capped them? Well, I don't cap them for a good reason. I can never find the caps, so. <laughs> All right, so if you were concerned, flashback here, you could take some thin CA and let it soak into all these joints and just kind of roll it around. And this isn't gonna hurt anything. I don't know, maybe it doesn't help anything either. But if you did have a gap or anything, this would, ugh, CA. This would definitely help get in there. So I'm just going to spin it here for a sec and let it soak in. Then I'm going to spray it and get it out of my face. So that is the blank. Now, let's get that out of there. Uh, what you'll see here is the X. It looks kind of just like that, right? What do you guys think? Was that pretty easy, pretty hard? Like I said, I, I've never had a pen blow up on me, but uh, I have had one of these come apart and that's it out of all the ones I've made. Pens do pretty well. Now, what I would normally do is, you know, cut this for a uh, whatever tube I'm making or if it was capped or whatever. Now you can always move that that knot wherever you want by how you place it in the saw. So if I wanted this up further for like the cap of a junior or something, I could have put the stop further back and moved it up. It doesn't matter where you put it in here. And if you have a nice long piece of something, you can cut it by hand without using a jig safely. But when it's a pen blank there, I mean, they're short to begin with. So when you're cutting these little bits off, I don't want to be holding them myself. But this is it. So this is where I would now cut it, drill it, um, one thing when I drill, I make sure and hold it in a vise that gets two corners really well because I don't want to give it any reason to break. I don't want to be holding it down here and drilling and putting all that pressure on these glue joints because, I mean, we're gluing a metal to a wood. It's not ideal for uh, adhesion, but it seems to work pretty well. So the magic of, of videos here is I prepped one two weeks ago when we thought we were going to do this to turn. Now here is what it looks like. I haven't turned this, but I sanded it. So I just literally took my blank and rolled it on the sander to get this. And what's cool about it is you can already see 
the pattern starting to come through. Now this is a big pattern, a big open pattern I should say, and that's because it's a 45 degree angle. If you wanted it tighter, like this, you might do a 40, a 35, whatever, to get the angle you like. When I first did this, I made, I think, four different ones of different angles to get the angle I liked, and this was the one I liked the most, but it's been a while now, I can't remember what it was. I think it was a 40, 40 degrees. This is a 45, so this is open. This is perfect for like a, a pepper grinder or a handle. Um, but this is just round on here, so this is pretty cool. So let's go ahead. Um, if anyone is interested, sorry Amy, I'll make some work for you. Somebody can have this blank if they want to turn it, as long as they promise to like send a picture when it's done. And if you want, I can cut it and drill it for you. If you're nervous about that, just tell me what tube you want to use. But um, Amy will go through the chat and pick somebody. So if you want it, say yay. If not, don't say anything. But uh, that way you can turn one of these because it's the same cut off of this. It was the same blank. I stabilized some spalted maple and it looked really cool. So going back to it, this is the, this is just the sanded version. So it quickly goes from squares, just taking off the corners. I mean, you can see it's still a full blank. Just taking off the corners gives you that rounded look. Kim takes it. Kim? Kim Coles. All right, it's gone. Sorry, Kim Coles. But I thought this was really cool because when I first made the first one, I was like, well, this is a bunch of squares. How's this going to work, you know? But then you remember you're going to round it. And it comes out pretty cool. So let's pop this sucker on. Here, I'm gonna write Kim Coles on this. I got it. Oh, you're gonna write it on there? Fun. How do you spell it? K? Kim. Well, I know that. I mean the other part. <laughs> C or K? Cole? Uh, C. <clears throat> Kim Coles. It's official. If you want me to cut it and drill it, let me know what, what uh, it's for, Kim. Provided I don't bust it up in the process. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and Amy, Amy will post some pictures of that um, on Facebook and YouTube of the blank and the turn here. So, what we're gonna do, a real quick turn basically, because you probably wanna see it smaller. Let's see, Monarch. Yeah. Amy, will you grab me the dead center out of... Never mind, it's right here. So I'm going to use some TBC bushings. If you're not sure what TBC is, um, let us know. Or I have a video I posted the other day of it. What did I do with this? I just had them. There it is. Um, but TBC is just turning between centers. And it's my preferred way to turn. Not all kits you can get TBC bushings, but shameless plug at Turner's Warehouse, we make killer TBC bushings made right here in Arizona uh, for turning your traditional bushings into TBC bushings. Now I'll show you what this is. So we got a dead center in the headstock, a live center on the tailstock. We bring it up, lock our, our uh, tailstock and then just advance it into the bushings. Now you want it snug but not tight, not crazy tight I should say. And this is going to push in that taper just a little bit because I just put it in so I can feel it move there but now it stops. So I'm just kind of snugging it. See how she sounds. Oh great. Okay. Recommended drill bit, Brad point versus regular. Um, so it doesn't matter, although I think once you've got it glued up like this, regular is better. Now you can pre, let's say you were doing the, uh, this type where the segments are just flat. You can actually pre-drill the segments and your blank and like put it all on the tube before you glue it up. I think I did a video on that too. Um, and that's much easier than trying to glue a blank together and then drilling it. I guess maybe it's not much easier, but I like it better because then I can, I can line everything up easier that way. If I 
glue it up and then drill it and kind of spit the tube and it's harder to line up but then you can make your ends real specific so this stuff drills really easy I usually use a brad point when I'm drilling the material by itself with no blank and the reason being is the brad point will kind of like cut it and cut a disc off then you just pop it off the brad point and move on to the next one and it, it seems to cut really well but if you're gluing or if you're drilling this one that we just glued up I would use a traditional bit for sure for sure okay so we'll use a uh, easy wood tool rougher here. This is a negative rake. I don't need negative rake on here, but my tool has a negative rake on it right now. So we're going to leave it. I'll turn this pup up as fast as it'll go. This is a uh, Record Power Regent 220 machine. It goes up to 3900. And if you're interested, we have a container coming from the UK full of Record Power machines. So let us know because we are taking orders on those. Now I'm just going to get this thing round before I get crazy with it. But you can see, I don't know if you can see that shine in the video, but when I go over that aluminum, it like polishes it right up. And I'm not quite round here, so I'm getting it in here. Let me... Grab a mask, this is dusty. Send vintage material. Kim is gonna do a Celtic knot rollerball pin. Okay. I think it should be great. Any other questions while I mask up? So everybody asks, I'm sure somebody will ask, like, could you use traditional tools? Uh, if you use a truck. So you could turn with a gouge. This material has no problem, even high-speed steel. So although carbide is my choice, if you have high speed steel, use it. You can see me turning that material right there. No problem. So, let's take a look here. That is already cool looking. See, you still get excited. Like, doesn't that look cool? And it's just barely getting round. Um, and I will say this one, the grain lines are wavy, the dark lines, the spalting. But I did mess this one up when I glued it. I had a big, like, offset. But still, you probably can't tell. I guess maybe that side is bigger than that side, so that's probably what it is. But what do I care? I love that green. It's cool too. This green looks really good. It's the cactus juice teal green. Or maybe emerald green. Say again. This is an old RZ mask um, that I've had forever. I've been using the the trend. You want to hand me that one by the computer? I didn't see it till I just got this one, but 
Uh, I've been using these Tran disposables because they last a long time and they're really light and comfortable. And in Arizona, like heat matters. So this is what I've been using mostly, but this is an old RZ I've had for years. So this is probably where we're gonna stop because I actually don't know which pen this is gonna go on yet, but you can see here, it's pretty awesome. And if you guys have any ideas for segmenting or tips or tricks, like shoot us a message because I'd love to try other stuff uh, with this material if you have ideas. But this does look pretty cool, doesn't it? It's a, it's a fairly simple way to make a complex look because I think this looks pretty complex.